Hi, 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 hello everyone! Hi, thank you very much for the huge raid, Maxi. Hello. Hello, hello, hi everyone. Silent Hill 1 speedruns today. But you see, <laughs> you, you've raided at a fantastic time. Uh, as I'm about to do something really dumb before I start doing Silent Hill 1 speedruns for the day. Hello, here I am. You can I, I promise there will be speedruns with PS2. Sounds utterly wretched, and I am excited to see the pain it inflicts. Final Ferret, thanks for the 14 months. Yeah, so this was doing the rounds on Twitter somewhat recently, and I thought, why don't I just try it? So I bought canned tea. It's, it's tea in an aerosol can. English breakfast. Let's cut to the cut to like the big screen. Hello. Canned canned aerosol tea. No more tea bags. Instant tea. I have the instant focus turned off because normally I don't bring anything close to the camera. You see, I have a point of comparison for this. The point of comparison I have is uh, normally is that I also have a uh, this 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 Taihu instant tea. This shit is awful. This shit tastes so bad. <laughs> This- I have to put a lot of sweetener in this to make it even vaguely palatable. It's really bad. That shit is no good. You know, normally when I'm on this scene, it's supposed to put a... a little picture of the game in the corner. For some reason, that is not working right now. Why not? I have a theory. A game theory. Ugh! I don't know, I just like having it there. Like, it, it lets people know I am actually playing a game. Anyway, aerosol tea. Do you spray it into a cup or straight into the gob? You spray it into a cup. Cover, it's, the instructions are on the back. One short squirt, just enough to cover the bottom of your cup, about 10 milliliters or a dessert spoon. Add hot water and that's it. It is not clear if I have to add my own milk or like sugar to that because I'm the kind of person who likes his English breakfast with milk and sugar. But I have just boiled the kettle, so I will be right back with the taste test. A short squirt of tea. How does this work? It was the- it's not attached properly. <laughs> Problem number one! Uh, the squirty bit. Not attached properly. I have my Dance Rush Stardom mug here. Uh, this was like $60. This is a $60 mug, dude. Ooh. It's liquidy, which I suppose you would expect from tea. You can- can, can you see the tea? Kind of? Now that's the sound of quality. Precisely. I can't, like, bring the kettle onto the camera. This isn't a cooking stream. That is, in fact... It's hard to tilt this towards the camera. That is, in fact, black tea. It doesn't contain its own, uh... whitener, as the other one calls it. In other words, I need to add my own milk. Because I like my tea with milk. Which is fine. It's just not, it's not the most instant, you know? I have added my own milk to the brew, and now it resembles a cup of tea. So, uh... It doesn't smell terrible. <laughs> it smells like tea. That's fine. Incredible. Uh, it tastes a little bland, weirdly enough. 
I think I, I also think you need to put your own sweetener in this or sugar if you're the kind of person who puts sugar in their tea. I don't think it like has any sweetener inherent in it. But uh, I would say that that, despite all expectations to the contrary, spray can tea is better than the powder stuff. This shit tastes awful. There's no way you can make this not taste awful. Like, I have to struggle to drink, like, I bring this to work, you see, because they don't provide tea at work. They didn't. They do now. They started doing it. This, this shit is awful. This is really bad. That tastes like absolute crap. I'm gonna, like, dunk a few sweeteners in that and see if that, like, changes the situation. I'm in fact a person who likes his tea with milk and sugar because I have the palate of a five-year-old. That was a bit too much sweetener, I think. <laughs> That's not bad, though. I don't know if I'd say it's an improvement over a tea bag, but I don't think it's worse either. That's not bad. That, that in fact does what it says on the tin. Crazy. Not bad. That's a good effort. I respect that. It's much better than this, which is fucking dreadful. Yeah, milk, you got you got to put your own milk and sugar and sweeteners in that, which, I mean, makes sense, you know? How much a bottle? Uh, it was like three quid. So, I mean, you get 20, that's pretty expensive. <laughs> uh, apparently there's like about 20 cups of tea in this. That's pretty expensive. How fast it expires, it keeps for like a full year. But yeah, that's honestly, I'm surprised. I think that, is that like the most uninteresting result of this? Is that my conclusion is that the, the instant squirty tea is not an abomination of mankind, but it's actually pretty alright. It is quite expensive relative to. Tea bags are cheaper. Tea bags are cheaper by a, a wide margin. Because again, that, that was like three quid for a bottle. I bought two. I also bought the Earl Grey variant. I don't know why. Uh, I don't really like Earl Grey tea. This, for whatever reason, the can on this one has like a printing error. <laughs> it's, like, it's got like black ink on it. It's not, it's not that expensive, but it's more expensive than tea bags. But that being said, I can't bring a whole box of tea cans with me to the tea cans, tea bags with me to a, I could bring a can of this. So I'll be honest with you. I actually think I'm going to get use out of that. That's crazy. Cause that is definitely this awful, <laughs> very bad. <laughs> Cannot stress enough how rancid this tastes. No, no, nothing you can do will make this taste good. It's unbelievable. Whereas this, this is alright. You, you gotta put your own milk and sweetener in it if you're the kind of person who likes your tea with that. But that's tea. That's, that is identifiable as a cup of tea. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's tea. That's tea. I can't complain. What if I mix Typhon and aerosol tea? <laughs> that would be so bad. Attend to it's identifiable as a cup of tea. Stellar review. It's fine. It's not like the best cup I've ever had. But I might not have been the best person to do this review because I don't really have strong. Uh, I don't have strong opinions about like different brands of tea. It's just it's you know this is that's about as good as any tea bag I think. I would not, I, I do not find this difficult to drink, you know, it's, it's not, it's not like a struggle. Whereas this, I have to put like fucking three times the amount of sweetener in it, just to make it like, to make it not awful. Because otherwise, it's awful, it's so bad. I bought this because I thought, you know, okay, I want some tea when I'm at work, before my work started just leaving tea bags out. Uh... You know, I thought, you know, sure, instant tea. It might not be as good as the real thing, but it's fine. I also have, like, instant coffee, and that's pretty rank as well, but it gets the job done. That, on the other hand, is like, I have to be really, really in the mood for tea to think to think this is a good idea. Instant, instant spray tea? It's not bad. It's all right. They call it canny tea, which uh, I'm not sure I'm a fan of. Not my favorite description. I wouldn't describe the tea as canny. It's not canny at all. 
I'm also not sure about the value proposition of this. I, if you if you are in desperate need of portable tea and like I don't know, you have the the, the milk and sweetness situation. That's the that's the thing, right? I don't really like drinking the tea. If you if you like drinking tea without milk and without sugar, this will probably do you sweet if you're like on the move because all you need is hot water. But milk is notoriously not very portable. That's all, that's all, that's sort of the difficult aspect of portable tea. Is that milk milk I like milk as part of the equation and milk is not especially portable. It doesn't ke it doesn't keep and it's like, you know, bulky. So that's a problem. Is that punchy? Does your work not have fridges? Like, yeah, but I don't want to bring a carton of milk to my goddamn workplace. <laughs> Tea! Tea, ladies and gentlemen. Use powdered milk? I guess you could. I guess you could. I'll probably take this to work with me tomorrow, honestly, and probably get very weird looks. And we'll be like, no, seriously, it's good. And they're going to look at me like, what the fuck are you talking about? You're crazy. Yeah, I only got this because it was doing the rounds again on Twitter, even though as a product, this is actually quite old. Uh, like, this has been around since since at least 2017, I feel like. The, like, the first time people got angry about it on the British internet. But this time it started doing the rounds on the American internet instead for some reason. I thought, you know what? They're like three quid a bottle. I'll give it a go. I drink tea. I'm a tea drinking person. Anyway, that's all right. That's all right. That's tea. That's that's the tea review. Surprisingly all right. I'm not going to drink the Earl Grey variant. At least not right now. Maybe maybe another day. We can try Earl Grey powdered tea and uh, not powdered, the canned tea. I don't have Earl Grey powdered. That'd be ridiculous. Right, to the speedruns. That's the memory card. You can see I was playing Okage the Shadow King. Became too snobbish to drink tea bag tea. I just like I don't. It doesn't gotta be fancy tea. I just need tea, you know. I like all kinds of tea. Yes. Okay. My goal today is simply PB of any description, because I I tied fourth place last time with the blessing of seventy k. Uh, but ties suck. Ties are for job interviews, not speedrun leaderboards. Is there a difference between JP or English Silent Hill? Sure, one's written in Japanese and the other's in English. Cheryl? Is that Cheryl? See? Japanese. Where are you going? Do I enjoy any herbal teas? Wait, stop. I don't actually know what defines a herbal tea. I feel like the answer to that question is yes. But I'm very unconcerned about the particulars. Likes tea so much he doesn't read the box. It's like, I just, I'm just not sure what a herb is, really. What 
is this? What's going on here? Oh, curse of 70k bad RNG. Uh, the kind of tea I wish I could get more is like bottled oolong cha. So unfortunately, they don't just sell bottled oolong cha around here. You have to, like, get it from a specialty grocery store. It's bullshit. It's like, why is it, like, an import thing? We have the technology to bottle oolong cha around here. The fuck? So why don't you brew it yourself and bottle it yourself? That's sure. a pain, is, that is the answer to that question. Not enough UK weebs. It's good what sipping going? tea. Wait, and stop. it like the thing about oolong cha is that it tastes good at room temperature. Whereas English breakfast tea really does not, despite all the times I have drunk it like lukewarm anyway because I forget about the mug of tea on my desk. It really does not taste good when it's lukewarm. English breakfast tea only tastes good when it's hot. Oolong tastes good at a variety of temperatures. buy giant bottles of oolong and put it in the fridge. I wish I could do that. <laughs> they don't sell giant bottles of oolong. It makes it makes especially good companion for like streams is the thing I find. If I could have a bottle of oolong next to me for every stream I do, I would. What is this? What's going on here? Cuz it's good to just like sip on as the stream goes on. You don't you don't like Gulp it all down at once. That's grim. My RNG is bad. I'll get. I'll get. Playable RNG at some point, I swear it's not that rare. One day he'll have a bottle of water, but water is so plain. Cheryl? Is that Cheryl? Shimmy can't buy the thing. Chat, why don't you no one's just saying just buy the thing? Cosmic lives in um in Singapore. There we go. Why did that take going? so long for me to remember? In Singapore, I assume you can just Wait, buy stop. bottle. In the UK, not so much. Very you can buy iced tea. For some reason, the only kind of tea that you can buy in, like, bottled form in the UK, at least in, like, an average supermarket, is iced tea. And I'm not much for iced tea. Like, at least of the variant that they- like, I know iced tea is just- it's just tea, but, like, cold. Either way, they got, like, it's like, like, lemon iced tea or whatever is, is the common thing I see, and that's not- mm. That shit tastes like medicine. I'm not about it myself. Hey, Aaron Goy. Good day. Good day. Yeah, it's not amazing. I gave it a try once and was like, nah, that's not the one. That's not the one. this? What's going on here? I'm not raising my own oolong bush. You know, maybe, maybe we should just spend the entire stream oh. drinking tea. Maybe speedruns just aren't, it's just not it. Maybe speedruns are bad, actually. No, 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 no. I didn't skip the opening cutscene. Oh, he's so cringe. Ay 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 ay. Pivoting. I'm pivoting to Nubal TTs. I can no longer speak either. Yeah, I'm, I'm no longer going to speak either. I'm just gonna like drink the tea. And if it's alright, I'll give up. Is that Cheryl? 
Uh, but if it sucks, I'll give a cold nod. Where are you going? Hey, wait, stop. Did you miss the tea? You did, unfortunately. It was like the first 20 minutes of the stream. Conclusion, surprisingly all right. Definitely an improvement over uh, the shitty instant powdered tea that I had before. Ultimate tea influencer. How do I get sponsored by a tea company? It would make the most sense. Surprised no one's made a tea game? I feel like someone must have, and we just don't know about it. What is this? Going on Ever tried carbonated tea? That sounds like a sin. Oh my god. Oh. My. God. They just can't keep doing this to me. Get a soda stream you could carbonate the milk too. I don't know if you like they sell them in the UK. I disagree. Agency Cheer 16. Grimalkin, thank you for the 23 months. Cheryl? Is that Cheryl? How do I feel about green tea? Green tea's pretty good. I got some in my cupboard. I have like five kinds of tea back there. Where are you going? Seven, if you count the fact I still have some of those novelty tea bags with stupid Wait, flavors stop. like jam toast and malted biscuit. Jam toast, surprisingly good tea flavor. Malted biscuit feels like drinking sand. Not good. Spirity is on game. Ah, there is that game, Spirity, yeah. Spirity became best known on the internet because of the guy who... <laughs> because of the, the guy who got kind of... a bit weird about the idea of, like, sending keys to people who must make the YouTube videos. I feel like that that guy got several thousand times more shit than he deserved, but he was working with a very, like, 2013-ass idea of how, like, the content creator what landscape works, you know? What's going on here? Yatta! Playable. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people read malice into that guy's opinions about it, and I didn't. I, I thought that was too harsh. What's that? Huh, radio. What's going on with that radio? This is my dream. What's happening to this place? I wonder. Uh, I wonder if Spirit T actually sold any better after. I, I will say that 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 little uh, that little snafu sure got a lot of attention on the game. <laughs> I wonder if it made any sort of a difference.
See, I felt, I felt like, kind of half bad for the guy, but also half not, because on the other hand, the, uh... I do get those sorts of emails in the sense that I just, I get emails from the kinds of people who think that... How do I put this? You get emails from developers and or publishers, both. Usually, sometimes it's a solo dev when they don't, like, have a publisher. Uh, who think that the act of giving a streamer of my size a key is, like, a favor. With, with like, the expectation of coverage, and it's just kind of not. Not inherently. I don't know how to say that without coming off like an asshole. So I think I just have to come off like an asshole. But, like, if, if, you, if you want coverage from me in exchange for, like, giving me a key, you are not doing me a favor. Like, you want something. From me. So, what you are describing is a transaction. This, this is transactional. You know, I, it, I also, you know, don't act like it, it's beneath me. It's like, you know, I would... Of, of course you give me the keys. It's like, I, I deserve them. I'm the big streamer man. I have all the key. You know, be polite, be cordial. Like, it's nice of you to offer, etc, etc. But again, like, you want something from me. So you, you want something from me. I will therefore accept a thing from you. Maybe it is also something I want. There is mutual benefit. It pays to be, it pays to be cordial and polite in such dealings. When you are expecting something from me, like if, if the the situation especially depends on who reaches out to who first. Hey there, Train Royale. Thanks for the good luck. I, th I think the most irritating kind of email I get... ...in terms of, like, people who are clearly trying to solicit coverage from me are the ones that don't even include, like, any information about like, how to get a key, or, like, you know, reply to this email if you want to be, like, on our whatever. They just send, like, an ad for the game to my inbox, and, like, you just expect me to buy it. It's like, that's not how this works. I, I get the logic of why they do it. It's like, you know, streamer boy put the idea in his head by sending what is functionally an ad to his inbox. It's like, can we not do that, though? <laughs> That inbox is for inquiries. That is functionally spam. Get it out of here. And you, you will find solo devs who do that.
This, this, if, if, if you're a solo dev, do not email an influencer with, like, a description of your game and a link to your store page. At least not without, like, anything else in the email about, like, hey, if you would like a key, you know, reply and I can sort you out. That's fine. That's okay. You know, a store page can have valuable information about a game. But if you don't include anything in the email about, like, you know, reply to this or, like, I don't know, fill out this Google Doc form, that's another common one. Uh, I will assume you have just sent me an ad and I will probably put your address on my spam filter. He ding. He dinged when he should have donged. Critical error. Yeah. Now, my favorite kind of emails that I get, even though I think this is probably a bad idea to actually do, are the ones that just cold message you a key, like just flat out. Yeah, the, the Withering Rooms dev might have been my favorite because I think the way they did it is probably objectively really bad, but it made me interested enough to follow up, so. For those of you who, uh, who, who uh, didn't hear this one, the, the Withering Rooms dev, when they sent me a, a key for their game initially, they, they just cold emailed it to me out of nowhere. Uh, with, like a, with like two sentences describing their game and nothing else. <laughs> you know, our game is a, is a horror action RPG, kind of like Clock Tower. Here's a key. And I was like, what the fuck? So I almost dismissed the message as like some kind of... <laughs> like, not legit at first, because it was serious, there was like nothing in it. It's like this, it's a video game. Here's a key. Huh? So I ended up looking at the store page for that one and being like, this game looks insane. This is either going to be really great or really awful with no in-between. Unfortunately, it turned out to be the first thing. It's really great. Yeah, it, it, it felt like the most, the, the most like, quick way to, like, fire off keys to as many people as they did. Just like, here's a two-line description of a game, here's a key, whatever. I'm sending, like, hundreds of these, fuck it. Six and roll, six and jam, happy spring equinox. And thank you for months and months of entertainment. Six and love, six and love. Alenko, thank you for the 20 months. Glad you've been enjoying the streams. So that's, that's probably not a very, like, detailed way to, uh distribute keys unless you just really don't give a fuck. But then again, I don't know, it worked. I played it, I streamed it many times, I ended up picking it up as a run. I streamed it on the GDQ stream. That that guy got a lot of advertising out of me. So like, I don't know, clearly, clearly the approach was effective on me at least. Ooh, oh, close enough. It only cost them two lines of text and a key. I disagree. Whoa! Hello, Nucor. Thank you for gifting ten subs in the stream. Holy shit! Liquid, Magos Informaticus, Tacky Fox, Rue the Ark, Dale Redfield, King for Kings, Old Man Azrael, Salty and Sleepy. That's me. Cardin and Failed Uplink. Enjoy your gift subs. Thank you very much. Hello. Hello, 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 man. <laughs> a lot of consonants in the name. Struggling with that one. It's 
Incidentally, I think Withering Rooms actually enters um, uh, 1.0, like it's leaving early access relatively soon. And it will be now considered complete. I fucked up. Oh, I got away with it. Lucky. I didn't turn my flash head off. That was a mistake. But I was not punished for it. Ha <laughs> ha. Just hell is fine. Okay. Yep. <laughs> As in the Norse god of death. Something we are all familiar with. Thank you for gifting a sub to Lamia Princess, help. Will there be a patch to romance the dream goth girl? No. It's supposed to be a horror game! There is no romance. I say that, like the last horror game I finished didn't involve... did not partially involve, like, a, a love story in the middle. Clearly, clearly, you can make it work. Does Patreon take a percentage of the money given? Uh, yes, but not very much. They take some, like, service fee. Every, his, everything will take a fee of some description. It's definitely less than Twitch. Twitch probably has the worst split of anything. YouTube is a bit less of one if you uh, sign up as a member over there. But Patreon is less than that. I also, I'll be honest with you, I don't really have any good way to facilitate useful bonuses for uh, for uh, YouTube members. Get into position, Mason. Like, for, if, if you're a Twitch subscriber or a Patreon, you get access to the supporter channel on my Discord, which is meant to be where I post teasers of upcoming projects, but in reality what happens is people just post cat photos there. There are remotes on YouTube, but the thing is is that I have no ability to, uh, like, integrate YouTube members into that whole dynamic. There's no way to sort of tap into the API to do that. I could allocate it manually, but then I have to keep track of it manually. The VIP cat photo channel. Only accessible to the esteemed supporter of man who likes playing PS1 games. I disagree. Star afar. Thank you for the 28 months. How are the month numbers getting this high? How have I been streaming for this long? Uh. 
As the month numbers get bigger, I start having more and more of an existential crisis. Don't do it. Don't do it. He's gonna do it. He's thinking about it. No, he's not. He stopped thinking about it. Hey, Claude Alexis. It's going all right. For some reason, I still feel half asleep even though I slept great. I slept a square eight hours. Outstanding. That was a bit. That was a bit. I feel half asleep in like a different way than usual though. Curse of 7BK. Yeah, this is this is still the 70k PS2. It's still plugged in. It's crazy that 70k units are faster RTA. That really like calls into question a bunch of runs I've done over the years. It's like, what games are faster on 70k models? Like some of them are. Normally, load times are the king. But in this game. It does not matter. Crash Team Racing requires a fat PS2 at top level. I've heard that one, yeah. Crash Team Racing uh, runs better on fats than it does on slims for some reason. But that game has so much loading time. You feel like load times would dominate. I feel like it would be all about load times, or at least I do. But clearly not. Clearly that's not the way. That's why it's complicated. There's really no way to know other than to just try it on a bunch of systems and see what happens. You like Silent Hill? Well, you're in the right place!
Ja. For I sure do speed run the Silent Hills a lot around here. I'm unfortunately typecast into the role of Silent Hill speedrunner. Whenever I try to play a different game, people go, WE WANT SILENT HILL PUNCHING! They yell at me, they scream at me, they bray at me. Until I eventually capitulate and just go back to playing Silent Hill. This is not actually true, I haven't like, meaningfully touched Silent Hill 1 in like, what? I don't know. Probably a few months. <laughs> Speedrun Silent Hill. I am! I am! Ruggums, thank you for the two months. Why wasn't the door opening? Uh mm, little janky, but fine. When are you going to speedrun Silent Hill? I want you to speedrun Silent Hill. When, when, when? <laughs> Actually, weirdly enough, that, that that really doesn't happen. You know, what did happen multiple times with people telling me to run Resident Evil 3. A game I have never ran before and have in fact only finished like once in my life. Twice. Twice. I finished it twice in my life. Sucks. I'm doing that too early. Despite the fact Silent Hill 1 is one of my uh, my most enduring popular runs, I guess maybe that's why people don't request it specifically, because they know he'll he'll do it eventually. He'll he'll always come back. He always comes back. But uh, on, on the archive channel side of things, the YouTube comments very frequently ask me to do Silent Hill 2 again. I get a lot of comments, like, you know, it's like, when are you doing Silent Hill 2 again? When are you doing Silent Hill 2 again? So like, I'd like you to run Silent Hill 2 again for world record. I'm just like, no. <laughs> I don't want to. Ever consider speedrunning some games for more unorthodox genres like platformers or FPS? I've thought about it so hard that I've done it several times. Uh... <laughs> okay, why did the game do that? This is just like, this is just not the input that was provided. Come on now. I, I speedrun over 100 different games. There are in fact a few platformers and FPS games in there. Why is it so hard to pick up the key? I will check through the VOD so I can watch. You might have to check the archive channel more than that, because I've only been streaming on YouTube as of the past, like, few months. Whereas I've been speedrunning for, like, about a decade. But I've speedrun Doom 64 on the FPS side of things. I've speedrun Dusk. Uh, when it comes to platformers, I've speedrun Freedom Planet. Freedom Planet was, like, the only thing I did for about a fucking full year at one point. Uh, I did do Klonoa, but very briefly.
Hey, Nacho. Yeah, I've speedrun a lot of stuff. The caveat- the funny thing is that usually when people ask me, you know, have you, have you tried speedrunning X type of game? The answer is almost always yes, with the slightly irritating caveat in the back of my mind that people ask these questions because they don't watch it. <laughs> you know? Like when I do actually speedrun games like that, on balance, people don't watch it. It's why- it's why I often- I have the perception that the only thing I run is like tank control survival horror games, because it's by far and away the thing most people actually pay attention to. I have speed ran all sorts of bollocks, mate. All kinds of bullshit. Very nice. Hey, John, you can think of me having a run for his Dark Souls. That's not a genre, that's a series. Dark Souls is not a genre. <laughs> If you mean like action RPGs, then yeah, I've speedrun Kingdom Hearts before. Famously, people still use my goddamn strats. Because I'm very intelligent and read the wiki once and so figured out what Terra's D-Link actually did. <laughs> Whereas no one, apparently no one had bothered to do that before. So I was like, it's kind of a genre? Not really. It's just, it's just currently what boring people call action RPGs. What does it actually do? When you're at critical health, your damage gets a massive buff. You can see why this might be useful. So like yeah, I've have never ran a Dark Souls game, but I've definitely I've definitely ran action RPGs. You know, I think you have to start getting into like the uh the real minutiae of genre in order to find a kind of game I haven't done a run of. <laughs> what is the position? They say Dark Souls is a rhythm game. Annoying people say that. It's just an action RPG. There's, there's nothing, there's no need to slap unique qualifiers on top of that. So it's it's a, it's a rhythm game because I have never played an action game with a parry before. N -n 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 -n. Irritating.
You haven't heard anyone call DS a rhythm game? Sounds kind of dumb. Steam users do it by the fucking dozens, and it's why you can't actually search the rhythm game tag properly on that platform anymore. Because there are enough really annoying people who do that. Like, if you search rhythm game, Sekiro comes up, which is really irritating. Stop doing that. Like, funny meme, but it's actually, like, hurting searchability. Because when I search rhythm game, I don't fucking want action RPGs. Mm, that was about as... I didn't get hit, but that was bad. Like, two posts back to back. I like Sekiro, but fuck off with that. As a Sekiro hater, that's so annoying. We got the real spectrum. We got we got the likers and the haters. All united in the please stop tagging that game with rhythm game, dude. Please, please stop tagging non-rhythm games with rhythm game just because they have elements that require timing button presses. Every game does. Every genre has timed button presses. It came free with your being a fucking video game. This RNG is piss. Is it already moving? I feel like I hear it. No. People also tagging random shit as psychological horror. Yeah, that's also a really annoying thing. If this feel the way the Steam tags like the way people meme with Steam tags seems specifically designed to irritate me as a liker of rhythm games and horror games. Because when I search for rhythm games, I get fucking, like, action RPGs that have that happen to have a parry. Uh, I search psychological horror in pursuit of horror games, I get video editing software. Like, I get it. I understand. I too have had a meltdown at the computer over what the fuck Vegas is doing to my project file. But also, please don't do that. It seems purpose made to irritate me, the, the, the genuine liker who would like to be able to search for new entries in those two genres by way of Steam. And I just really struggle to do that because they're like the two shitpost tags. Fuck. There's, there's weird little secret tags, too. Did you know that if you search on Steam under the tag Faith, you get Toho games? All of them. Like, Faith is like the secret Toho tag. Wait, you get mainline Toho, you get... You get the you get the uh, the fan games as well. You get all of them. It's it's the Toho tag, but not Faith the video game. Faith the video game is weirdly enough not tagged Faith. <laughs> not done Maku. That's a Japanese word. They don't know what that means. Also, like Toho games, like in, at least as far as the fan games go. Well, even the official games cover a broader scope of games than just shmups. Thing, I, I am annoying and therefore, like, insist on a demarcation between, like, the fan games and the mainline stuff, because I'm one of those annoying people who actually, like, reads the books. Uh-oh, stinky, stinky run, stinky! Why does the flashlight need to be turned off sometimes? Sometimes I just like to run around in the dark, you know? It really, it, it makes me feel more at peace. 
it's so enemies don't do that. That thing that just happened there, it's so that that doesn't happen. I mean, he missed, but it's it's so enemies don't, like, hunt you down and kill you, because if, if you have your light on, they're more aggressive. The dog failed. There's no dog here. Enjoyed the Toho stream I did recently? Oh, the, the Danmaku Kagura one, the rhythm game. I got the DLC for that. They're releasing DLC for that on like a... every few months or so. The DLCs are more fully featured than I was expecting. I, like, it adds story content, which I thought it was just, like, song packs. It says it's song packs! It's, like, just, like, extra songs! And I thought, okay, it's gonna be more songs, but no, it, like, adds playable characters and, like, entire levels to the story mode. It's like, huh. That is more effort than I was expecting. <laughs> It's neat. It's pretty good video games. Good eating. No, why you gotta release so much earlier? Here, that guy hasn't stopped following me. selling like a boxed collector's edition of that that Toho Rhythm game for its eventual Switch release in September and it comes with like a seven disc soundtrack CD because it's like all it's all the music from a rhythm game right it's so like it's a lot of music it's big it's big especially with all the packs it's like 200 songs or something shit like that it's a lot of music there's a lot of songs in the video game put it all on CD CDs aren't that big but the collector's edition is like fucking 22,000 yen that's like, I mean, I know the yen is like in the crapper, so that's not actually as expensive as it could be, given the circumstance, but... That is like, over a hundred pounds or something like that, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. That's a lot of yen!
the craziest part, though, is that the, the, the 22,000 yen collector's edition comes with the game, but I don't think it comes with the DLC. <laughs> you still have to buy that separately. It's like, what the fuck do you mean? That seems a bit out there. Like, for that price, you'd expect everything to be included, but it really accounts for just, like, the, the... all of the little bits you get with the game. But still, goddamn, bro. Why the fuck everything costs money? Why the fuck everything costs money? Yeah, I miss physical games as well, like on PC. I still have a- I have a physical copy of Sam and Max Hit the Road, and that's a real nice box. It's got a bunch of, like, raw stuff included with the game. That was about as far as I could get away with doing that from, Jesus. Don't make a habit out of that. The thing I find, though, is that I do get why PC gaming trended in that direction. Because I will not lie, I do obviously find the digital... the digital game distribution on the personal computer to be highly convenient. But what I find strange is that I don't really find it very convenient on console. Like, I will pretty much always buy a game physically on console when opportunity permits. I basically never prefer a digital copy of a console game. Oh. And I think the difference is mostly pricing. Don, don. That might have been a bit early. No, I got away with it.
Like, every game on PSN is incredibly expensive. Physical is almost always slightly cheaper. That's very bad RNG. That's really unlucky. That sucks, dude. That's like a fucking 5% fail. That's not a common way to get grabbed. Uh, console seems increasingly poised to kill the disk drive, and if they ever actually like fully go ahead with doing that, I'll probably just stop buying consoles. Because I rarely buy con I rarely buy games non-physically on console. I think I own a single digital PS5 PS4 game rather. There are no PS5 games. <laughs> My PS5 is for playing PS4 games and nothing else. Still pretty good. It's not about that grab, but still a gold. There's time to save on Nowhere, to be sure. Daddy. To be sure. GB? No. Thank you, Daddy. Unlikely. Yeah, I think I own, like, a single digital PS4 game. One. Exactly one. And I think I- the only Switch games I own digitally are the ones that they didn't release physically. Thanks for the GG's. We finished the run. I just finished the run because I felt like finishing the run, honestly. That was pretty boned coming out of Resort. The RNG off that was crap. That makes sense. That adds up. That computes. So I, I just sometimes we just we just look at the IGT just to like sort of compare, and it's like, yeah, that computes. That's about in the right ballpark. No major discrepancies noticed here. I'm also hunting golds because like the last run was the very first run I did with 70k, so my golds are like, whenever I like go to my best segments, it's like, man, my. It's only eight seconds away from my best segments. That's crazy. This must be the most optimized run ever. It's like, not really. Not really. Not exactly. My splits didn't start. This is the worst day of my life. Why, why are my splits not starting now? What the fuck? Hello? Hello? <laughs> okay, my splits have just stopped responding. What? Hello? Oh! There we go. Numlock on my keyboard turned off. I use the numpad to control the splits. I also have a foot pedal, but that also just it just gives numpad inputs. BF this game, you need to be like one second from SOB at all times for optimized game. True. That is true. Where are you going? Hey, wait, stop. So in this category, I am now like under 30 seconds from world record.
which is not a lot of time in an absolute sense. finish that previous run because sometimes it's good to just finish runs. As a general rule, I recommend finishing your speedruns. Really? I picked up the health drink, reset. Fuck this shit. What's that? Huh, radio. What's going on with that radio? Never mind, free shot, we're so back. Yeah, the, the number of shots it takes to kill that dude in the cafe varies between, like, three to five. Six, I think. Can it be six on the high end? I don't know. Either way, it's definitely within a range. And obviously, three shots, it's faster. You know, you spend less time shooting the gun. So there's a nice slab of RNG for me right out the gate. Is it a health RNG thing? It's a health RNG thing. They just, they roll randomly for their health value. The, uh, the Silent Hill Perfect Navigation book contains, like, information about what the minimum and maximum is. And the testing that we have done largely backs up the information that the guide gives. Hey, Pumpkin Daimyo. How go if the runs? The runs goeth, okay? We finished a run, and it was a 32-8. Which is not bad. You know, it was not PB, but considering I can now get within, like, the 32... 0x zone. Just kind of off the cuff. That's not bad. You could do a lot worse than that. We were doing a lot worse than that, even, like, three days ago. Blessing of 70k, let me tell you. You finally ordered a blessed Japanese 70k yourself. They're not too expensive, I find. Like, I was looking on eBay for a, for a fat for some other dumb bullshit idea that I had. Uh, and they're, they're, they're like... 
there were some slims mixed in, and they're all like 40 to 50 quid. That's not a huge amount of money. It's the nice thing. Japanese consoles are not tremendously expensive. So when my chat was like bulking last stream and I was like pulling out all my PS2s, we were like, how the hell do you have so many? I was like, because they're not that expensive. You need all, you need all sorts. For the speed run. Most produced console ever, right? Yep. And most Japanese sellers have free delivery. Cause they ship by uh, by service mail sometimes. <laughs> Which is very cheap, but takes a long time. Fact, 90% of speedrunners quit right before they're about to PB. True. To the Silent Hill. I wanted dong! Go, go, ding and dong in the bungalow. That might be too deep a cut. Ah, the slow walk, man. How was the aerosol T? Surprisingly okay. The aerosol T was probably an improvement over previous instant T that I had lying around. Excuse you, what? I bought aerosol tea. Instant tea in an aerosol can. Ah, skip the cutscene. Skip, skip, cut, cut. Ha!
Hey, Ram Sham. Hope we're all well. I'm doing pretty good. Sounds interesting. It's 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 tea, but in an aerosol can instead of in a tea bag. And the end result is that honestly, it's pretty alright. Did you miss the aerosol tea? Yeah, I did it like when the stream started. Before I jumped into runs. People don't come here for reviews of teas in spray cans, they come here for speedruns. Here, here's here's spray tea. It's canny liquid instant tea. Short squirt, just enough to cover the bottom of your cup. Ad hoc border. That's that's what it says on the back of the can. By the way, I'm reading it. There's 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 spray can tea. Don't check. You don't really don't check that. It's, it's not that like squirty cream. And you know what? You know what's fucked up? It's not bad. All right. That is that is identifiable as a cup of tea that I could drink, as opposed to I have a, I have Typhoon powdered instant English breakfast tea. That shit is rancid. It's really bad. Come on, game. That's unlucky. You know, I could, I could make a tea of Earl Grey, and we could do aerosol tea again, because I did also buy the, the canned Earl Grey. Which was a bit of an odd choice, because I don't really like Earl Grey very much. So I'm not sure what sort of opinion I could be expected to provide on that. Uh, the only other variant flavour they had, besides, you know, standard English breakfast, was jasmine. And I don't have any sort of point of reference for that, because I don't think I've ever even drank jasmine tea before. Is it kind of, like, heretical to English people? That's why I bought it, because it was like doing the rounds on Twitter after people rediscovered its existence. Even though, as a product, canned... the, the canned tea is actually pretty old. Like, I'm pretty sure these have been around since at least 2017. Like, the product, not these specific cans. I mean, I got, I got, uh, I got Earl Grey here. Canned Earl Grey. 
Do you put milk in Earl Grey? Because I don't, the thing is, I don't like Earl Grey so much, so I'm not even, I don't remember how you even prepare it. Do you put, like, milk and sugar in it the same way you do with English breakfast? I mean, you don't have to with English breakfast, but most people do. RNG grab. One thing I will notice about the Earl Grey, right, is that the the spray nozzle seems to be has seems to have come off slightly. <laughs> Not encouraging. If it's fancy expensive, you have it raw. I love the idea of calling it raw tea. Fucking raw! This tea is fucking raw. Just add this canned tea and this fucking minion. Suck your dad. It's minion. It's fucking minion. I gotta say, that's the small, small Scottish child. By the way, has shit taste because I tried Paradise Punch and that's actually pretty good. It's fucking terrible for you, but what's minion about it? Yeah, we don't really have Calypso, mostly, in the UK. But, like, when I get it, it comes from the World Foods aisle, where it's like fucking four quid a bottle or something ridiculous. Because it's considered an import, they don't sell it like, it's it's not a thing over here. I think, I think it like, <laughs> violates normal standards for uh, for food distribution in the UK, because it is hilariously bad for you. line. So you, you drink you drink you drink a bottle of calypso? You shouldn't drink a bottle of calypso in one go. Like that's the first problem. Cuz it's like 900% added sugar. It's fucked up. It's terrible. Really bad for you. Like I'm no exemplar of good health, right? I eat garbage, and I'm 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 notably fond of sweets. But also, holy mother of fuck, do not make a habit out of drinking those. They are really bad for you. It's like just pure sugar. It's just liquid sugar, like through and through. However, it tastes. Great. Thank you. 
Kind of sounds like Fanta. Uh, it, it's a brand of lemonades. Usually sold in glass bottles. With a variety of flavors that make them look like nuclear waste. Like some of them are blue, some of them are like bright purple. And they are... They're like 8 million percent sugar. Drinking drinking one of them... I, I drank one of them on stream for the first time when I was able to get like a... A whole bunch of bottles. As like, you know, part of like, oh look at wacky British man tries American drink. It felt like being punched in the face. I drank the purple one first, I drank Island Wave and that felt like being punched. Like, right in the face. It, like, hurt to drink, but it was also really tasty. <laughs> like, it was good, it was good, I liked it. But also, that was, like, a little painful. Can't have the blue and purple ones due to not knowing if you're allergic to the food coloring using them. Well, you're not going to find out unless you try. This is not medical advice. Please do not do things unless advised by a doctor. This is not medical advice. This no. Don't sue me. And if. There's a, given given how concentrated and powerful calypsos are, uh, probably if you're not sure if you're allergic to anything in it, definitely don't don't even get within like a city block of this stuff. Or perhaps if you drink a little bit, you can build up an immunity to it, like poison. <laughs> Once again, not medical advice. Never medical advice. No, 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 no. Ah! That's probably not going to let me through. Oh, it did! It was a little far to the right there. I did not think that was going to work. <laughs> Poison sounds safer. Uh, sponsor me, Calypso. <laughs> On this stream, we say poison is safer than consuming your drinks.
you get low, more of worse for us items, and the UK gets some better things. I don't know if the UK gets better things. I think we just get less. <laughs> Like, it's a bit harder to kill yourself with food in the UK. But I think the corollary to that is that it's also harder to get stuff that's actually good. Like, maybe not good for you, but just food that's, like, that tastes good. It's just sort of broadly... You know, famously British cuisine is... is... not renowned for its palatableness. You know, the common internet joke is that British cuisine is gross and strange and ultimately not very good. And I have to I have to concur that as a Brit, I don't really disagree. <laughs> Every time I've been to America, uh, overwhelmingly I have enjoyed the food. And then I miss it when I'm not in America. It's just, it's about the only thing about going to America I actually like. Everything else makes me want to die. But, uh, the food? The food is tops. That, that, like, it's, it's excessive and decadent, but why not be excessive and decadent about food? You recall the French president saying you can't host Olympics when you do bad cooking. <laughs> What's the relation? How does that make any sense, French president? How? Explain! British man praising American food. I like American food. There's, like, more variety of places. And it comes in pretty large portions and it tastes good. It's also worth noting I like things that are objectively terrible for you as well. Just cook. But then I- when- when do speedrun? Cooking take time. Speed run fast. I'm not understanding the problem here. Why did it spin? Um, okay. That was seven shots, and it didn't... six, rather, and it still didn't die. That was the correct number of hits. And I did not get a kill for my trouble. Fuck off, game. Why do you even have contact damage? Fuck off. Why do you even have contact damage? What is your fucking problem? <laughs> Scammed. Hey, Ed. Thanks for the good luck. I don't get it. I hit all six of my shots that first time and it still didn't do enough damage. Like, I guess I was too far, but like, 
bullshit. <laughs> that doesn't happen. That's fake. Cheryl? Is that Cheryl? I'm gonna go ahead and just blame that one on RNG, because I don't see any reason for that not to have counted. Hey, wait! Stop! Wait, those must have been some just really shit damage rolls for that to have not worked. It's the best rating in Silent when you can possibly have. Ten stars. If you get 100 points out of 100, you get 10 stars. That's it. It's very simple. In the US, the portion size is so big because the restaurant expects you to want to take some back home. What's that this? is true, actually. What's going on here? Well, maybe it's true. But I find that a lot of places are at least prepared for that possibility. I'll take it. Which surprised me, personally. Because in the UK, if you're going to ask, like... Like, hey, can we can we get, like, a box to take this home? The, the UK restaurant will be like, what the fuck? No. <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, in the US, apparently they do not mind at all if you do that. Like, that was when I found when I went to, uh... What's that? I went eating, when I went out eating at oh, GDQ. You really? know, obviously there were Americans in the group. And I was like, Jesus Christ, this is so much food. I can't finish this all. You know, so, and then someone just tells me, like, just ask them for a box. I'm like, let me ask them for a box. A, th a thought that just wouldn't have even, would not not have occurred to me. To do. It would not have occurred to me to ask for a box. I can safely say that I have never ever once done that at a UK place. Never. But in America, dude's just like, just ask for a box. So I was like, okay, can I get a box? To take? And they're just like, yeah, sure. No problem. Like they went, pulled one out from under the counter instantly. I'm just like, what the fuck? You're 100% ready for that question. You know, if, okay, if you're at a place that does, like, dine-in and take-out, it is probably a less weird thing to ask. But the place I was eating at in America, I don't think was a take-out place. It was like a diner. Uh, they probably, they probably did do take-out in some capacity, but the point is it was not... <clears throat> it was not a place I would have expected to do take-out. It feels like everything does take-out now. In the post-pandemic, but this this was pre-pandemic existence, you know. I mean. Nowadays, the problem is just that I haven't actually eaten in at, like, a dine-in restaurant in years. <laughs> so, like, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't tell you if this has meaningfully changed in the UK or not, because I haven't really <laughs> sat into a place to eat since before the pandemic.
Well, I guess, okay, I guess it depends on the place, right? If you, if you go to, like, a fish and chips, which is, like, the staple UK food establishment, uh, it'll probably come in a box by default. Like, whether or not it's a, like, whether or not it has seats or not. Like, they, they want it, like, at, 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 at the quintessential kind of, uh, UK established. It will just come in a box by itself, so if you want to get up and leave, you can just take the box. So I guess in that sense, that's fine, but that, that like, comes in, that, there it's assumed. It's automatically assumed that you're probably going to get up and go, like, halfway through. <laughs> You don't sit down and dine in at a fish, even if it does have seats. They're just for show. You know, fa family diners, I, I've, I've never... I have never been in the situation where anyone has taken stuff home in a box. Hey, Empress Maddie, good morning. Simply does not occur. It's just not the done thing, darling. Cringe. That was movement, for sure. That was one of the movements of all time. Fancy fish and chips now, but have to wait until next week to order takeout. That's that's restraint. I respect that. So I haven't ordered takeout in at least 48 hours. Affected everyone with the desire for fish and chips. It's because it's, it's a good combination. The British are onto something here, you know? It's one of the very few things that we're onto. <laughs> we're not onto a lot, but we're onto that. I, meanwhile, will not be having fish and chips for dinner. I haven't decided what I'm having for dinner, but it will not be fish and chips.
Hey, Madeline. Hey, Mars. Good afternoon. No thanks for the good luck. I'll need it. Hey, Moogle. Thanks for the congrats on the sub-32. We got the sub-32 last stream, but then uh, I played Silent Hill 1 for 8 hours that stream in order to do it. Because I, I did not stream yesterday because Silent Hill 1 is a game that's pretty rough on the thumb from the, the way you're just crushing the D-pad constantly in order to do it. So uh, that day I was like, mm, maybe don't play Silent Hill for like another six hours in a row. took the day instead to try and write more of the script for the next video I'm making. And it feels like I didn't get very much done at all, but then I actually looked at the script and it turns out I wrote five pages yesterday, so clearly I did. What? Are you high? What the fuck are you talking about? Bad game. That's fucking unbelievable, what do you mean? Just say, no, you can't use this here, it says incorrectly, in front of the only place in the game where you can use that object. Like, okay. You know, two plus two equals five. I too can just be wrong for no reason. Cheryl? Is that Cheryl? No. Do you have tips for avoiding repetitive strain injury? No. Where are you going? know if there's any way you can avoid repetitive strain injury other than not to do repetitive activities. The problem with that is that speedrunning is one of the most repetitive activities at all. Of all. I avoid it by, by not playing Silent Hill 1 for long sessions multiple days in a row, I suppose. Because I'll be doing about three hours of stream today. About three and a half, roughly. How long have I got still? Yeah, about three and a half. And then I will not be streaming tomorrow because it is an in-office day. I have to be in the office to accomplish nothing I couldn't do from home because the in-office day is completely pointless. Generally speaking, complete waste of time on the part of everyone. Where are you going? Hey, wait, stop. So you, you may have noticed this by now, but I do not stream Thursdays in general because of that. Because it t I have to spend like an hour commuting to the office and it's just a huge waste of an hour. Just not do that. Doesn't do anything, it's just wasting my time. So I can sit in an empty office building to be on the laptop that they give me. It 
is totally pointless. What is this? What's going on here? That was a bit slow, but that's fine. You loathe commuting? Yeah, me too. Okay, so like when I say commute, I mean I walk. I walk to my office. Like, I just walk and it takes me about an hour of walking to get there. Mason, it'd be nice if you could like listen to the inputs I'm giving you. was holding right to turn the entire time and it just didn't fucking bother. Do you mind, uh, do you mind me asking what it is you do? I do, yes. <sighs> Much healthier and safer than driving. I still nearly got hit by a car the other day. Because on the way out of work, they were doing uh, roadworks. So all, like it was all blocked off and whatever. And one of the big old trucks they had blocking off the road was... Where are you going? Sort of parked, like, in the middle of, like, the crossing. And naturally, hey, the fucking nanosecond I try to cross, the motherfucker starts reversing in the wrong direction. Like, it's- that was not a lane where reversing, like... <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, cars go one way, that guy was reversing in the direction that the cars do not go in. So I was not expecting it to suddenly back up after it had sat there, unmoving for several full minutes. With timing that seemed like attempted murder, like the nanosecond I start stepping across the road to be like, can I cross? Like, what's going on here? Dude starts reversing and nearly fucking hits me. I like jump backwards to not get hit by this asshole who was just like reverse, suddenly reversed at like full speed without looking. What is this? What's going on here? I did commute via bike, but one of my tires burst and I haven't bothered to fix it. Cheryl? Is that Cheryl? Where are you going? Because I the thing is, is that I now only commute to the office like one day per week, sometimes Wait, not stop. even that. So the, the bike was a lot more valuable to me when it, I had to go to the office every day. And then, you know, when it was like a couple of times a week, but now I'm part-time and it's only one time a week, sometimes not even. So, going through the hassle of getting it fixed when I use it so infrequently now, just sort of, whatever, I'll just walk. Fuck it. I don't care anymore. Harry Mason walks to work. He sprints to work, is what he does. Hi, Tetris Ben. The walking commute has some kind of advantage, though. What is this? I'm, it's a very stupid advantage, but it gives What's me time to do my flashcards on my phone before I get to the office. Study, study, study. Oh. 
See, that's that's a thing I liked doing when the weather is nice. Just just walk around the park while doing my flashcards. Be done in like half an hour. That's actually how I write some of my videos as well. Is like when the weather is nice, I just write on like a Google Docs document on my phone. But phones aren't really that good for typing, so it's not it's not the ideal format. The problem is that I live in England, so when the weather is nice is a very restrictive set of criteria because the weather is never nice. <laughs> This is one of the many reasons I hate having to commute to the office. Walking through, because like, I work night shift, so I get off work at like midnight, right? So, oh great, now I have to walk to home, I have to walk home in the midnight cold. Great, no, I love this. This is a very reasonable thing to ask me to do. For a job where the office building is distinctly completely unnecessary. Just a wholesale waste of my time. Making me walk an hour in the fucking cold ass UK weather. In the dead of night. It's bollocks. an electric bike though. I like the sound of that, but I think this <laughs> I think they're technically considered illegal because they're considered like a passenger. So, uh, that being said, what are the odds of like that actually mattering? Low, I envision. But the UK has a weirdly shitty laws when it comes to it. basically everyone hates the cyclists, right? We have no reasonable bike lanes. Bike in the road, the cars try to kill you. Bike in the the bike in the, the pavement the sidewalk. Uh, all the pedestrians hate you. It's like, well, where the fuck am I supposed to be then, asshole? So I haven't encountered this, like, Frustration lately because I haven't been using the bike since I burst a tire. Bleh. But uh, there is also the, the contingent of people, at least around here, that treat the bike lane as anything that's not walking. In particular, there seems to be a problem among parents who like to push their uh, their baby carriages, their prams, in the bike lane. Do not do this. Do not do that. That is a bike lane for bikes. The problem is a matter of relative speed. If you are pushing it, you're still walking. Get out of the fucking bike lane. I have encountered this so much, and people always want- Like, I have, I have almost gotten into fights about this. Because I ring my bell at them in the bike lane, and they turn to look at me and they go, and I'm like, Get out of the fucking way, idiot. They're like, I've got a pram, and I'm like, BIKE LANE! Like, I almost threw hands with, like, a woman probably in her 50s over this. Bikes are faster than you. The, prob the problem isn't anything that's not walking, it's relative speed. <laughs> the bike is faster than the pram, because you are pushing it. Hey, Onigiri. Konbanwa. It's like, the, the problem isn't that I dislike your pram. The problem is a matter of relative speed. It's about logistics. If you are pushing your pram in the bike lane, the bikes will not be able to move around you. <laughs> because they are going faster than you. They're gonna run- they're gonna collide straight into you, and it's gonna be your fault. Just get out of the bike lane. You are moving at walking speed, because you're walking. Sanest bicycle enjoyer. Dude, I just want to ride the bike to work without, like, being... <laughs> I just want to ride the bike to work without being put in either mortal peril or making an enemy out of several different kinds of Karens.
This, this incidentally is not true of mobility scooters. I do not know what the, like, what the prevailing wisdom is on this. But mobility scooters tend to move faster than walking speed. So bike lane feels more intuitive for that. Or, and this is the worst, people who just like walk side by side with their dog, with the dog in the bike lane. Don't do that either. Dog is not bike. <laughs> That's a horrible light. Like, think think through the logistics of that for like two seconds. Your dog is now in the oncoming path of bikes. Matthias, thank you for the prime gaming. This is what I mean when I say people just use the bike lane for anything that's like not like a person walking. It's like, don't do that. <laughs> don't. You misunderstand its purpose. You hate when people cycle on the footpath? Well, where else are you supposed to cycle? That's the problem! You, anywhere you can cycle, the world hates you. Cycle in the road, the people driving the cars try to fucking kill you. On the road. Wrong! Not unless you want to fucking die! Try to understand that the relative danger of biking on the footpath is so much lower than biking in the road. Like, in the UK, biking in the road is a joke. You will die. Like, there's no good place, you know, do it in the road, the cars try to kill you. Do it in the footpath, you know, the, the pedestrians hate you. But at the very least, the pedestrians can't kill you. <laughs> Hi from Colombia, Punchy, you're the best. Thanks, Jan. Glad you enjoy the streams. Everyone's got that whole thing about drivers trying to kill cyclists. They will try to- I have seriously had people intentionally try to drive into me. People will honk gay horn at you, which is startling. But I've definitely had people try intentionally to try and run me off the road. That's why I don't bike in the road anymore, because it's like, they're gonna fucking kill me. You're, you're viewed as an inconvenience on the road, because it's not designed for bikes, it's designed for cars. Like, I do understand the driver frustration, but th the way that manifests is that people behind the wheel of a significantly heavier, bulkier machine than you will try to hit you with it. Don't let cars win. The cars win! They will kill me! I will die! The idea of trying to bike up that fucking freeway that I walk alongside to get to work is terrifying. Like, they're going real fast, and if they don't, like, if they do not pay the proper attention, I'm gonna get hit by a car going, like, 70.
Is that I know theoretically you are meant to ride the bike in the road, I know. Like, that's technically the law. In practice, that's so incredibly unsafe that, like, no one does it. Not unless you're incredibly brave. I've never seen anyone around here do it. Blech. Yeah, the people use the road. Maybe so. Like, it definitely is one of those things that depends on place. Like, I went to, uh... Sviden. I've been to Sviden, and over there, there were many bike lanes. It was, like, actually palatable. People were using them. You could actually go places. Many people. Cycling somewhat popular over there. It's like, damn, a dream world. Yeah, I don't imagine the tensions are, like, perfectly resolved, but, like, the infrastructure is much better in, like, a lot of mainland Europe for, for biking, whereas in the UK, at least in England, it's really not very good. There's just, there's just nowhere you're allowed to be where people won't hate you for being there. So nowadays, I just walk. The cars still try to kill you. But at least people- that's just like regular car driver inattentiveness rather than people acting like it's their duty to fucking run you off the road. When I walk, sounds hell at night alone. <laughs> Realistically, I think I'm the scariest thing out at that hour. So at, at that hour, I, there's just no one around. Like, it's not... I've never ran into anything especially worrisome. the item. Oh. Not optimal inputs. Boat lane. Hell yeah. My buddy sent you a loose disc of this last year. You played it on your PS1 with a little attached screen. Ah. Those little, uh, yeah. I don't have one of those, like, PS1, like, screen attachments, but that's a cool little thing. It makes the PS1 very portable. Especially if you have, like, the small... The, the small little, like, like, white, slim PS1. They're very tiny. I think that's the model it's meant to be used with. But in that situation, the PS1 itself becomes, honestly, about as portable as a Switch, provided you can find an outlet. <laughs> yeah, that was a four-shot. Boo! Middle-of-the-road kayak-sized lanes. I approve. Personally, I approve. That just, that sounds great. Yeah, Any, anything to mix sense. up the road dynamic.
Skeletons in a row! I disagree. Holy moly, Keenan, thanks for gifting five subs in the channel. Captain Olmec, Imde, Daddy Tree, Terend, Sage, Scallion, enjoy your gift subs. Thank you very much, Keenan. If only you could get a horse Uber. I do still sometimes see horses. Like, in use around here. More than once I have seen horses in the road. The horses have more confidence than like than we do to be in the road. It's like, I don't want to be in the road with a bike. No, no one wants to hit a horse with their car, you know? They will avoid the shit out of that. No one's got horse insurance. It's true, because like, how, how do you explain that, you know? Wait, you didn't see the horse? What are you, stupid? Cops in UK still ride horses? Not, like, universally. It's not like being, being a policeman automatically gives you a horse. Horse tends to be heavier than bite. Imagine reception of people hearing you've hit an animal. Some, yeah, no. Somehow that does seem like it would be taken as like you hit a horse with your car rather than oh you hit a cyclist. Just everyone hates cyclists. Fuck us. For having the temerity to not own a car. To travel a distance that doesn't make sense to traverse via car. No, game. That's so grim that that didn't count. That line looked really good, too, and the game fucked me on it. Mason, you're a fucking twat. Get the fuck out of here. Place this idiot with a better Mason. Cheryl? Is that Cheryl? What do you think Harry Mason writes about? Cuz like he's an author. That's his job. Is he the only Silent Hill protagonist whose job we know? Like what the fuck is James Sunderland's job? Like Heather probably doesn't have a job. Henry Townsend, I don't think, even has a personality, much less a job. I got, like, four different answers for what Sunderland's job is, so that... Okay. James is a clerk? Clerk of what description? That's too vague. Henry 
Henry Townsend is a photographer. A photographer? What is this? Photographer of fucking what? What's going on here? His ass! Bad RNG. According to the book. What book? What book? What book are we talking about here? I'm being told according to the book. What book? Sound like two character commentary, Book of Lost Memories. That book. You think if I heard correctly, James is a Wikipedia moderator. Wait, you don't get paid for that? Okay, what- okay, let's- let's move on to the- to the Western Silent Hill. Uh, you know, Western Silent Hill protagonists actually tend to have fairly decently defined jobs. Like, Travis is quite clearly a long-distance haulier. Or, colloquially, a trucker. But I used the fancy term. Did you say Hawley? Yeah, that's that's the fancy word for it. The fancy term for people who drive trucks long distance in order to transport goods and materials is, is a long distance holy year. What's going on here? Uh, Alex Homecoming is was a soldier, except I think the twist of that game is that he never was a soldier. Like he kind of deluded himself into thinking he was- I'm gonna count it anyway. And Downport, do we know what Murphy Pendleton's job was meant to be? What's going on with Do we ever get told that? Convict doesn't count as an occupation in this case. Not that it's like incredibly important that we have this information, I'm just like thinking for no reason, you know? Okay, that's it seems like a no. No one seems to know this. Professional guy. Is Harry's occupation different in Shadow Memories? No, I think he's still an author. The Protag of Book of Memes. Well, the Protag. I think. I think contextually, the Protag in Book of Memes is just a college student. Occupation student. Except I think uh, part of the initial plot of Book of Memories involves like an imp a, a, a co-worker at some store getting a getting a promotion before you, and so you write in the book to influence the outcome of that because Book of Memories is a bunch of nonsense. So like student, but like part-time job at I don't know a store. I don't I don't remember this part incredibly well because Book of Memories is really boring. <laughs> Yeah, she can't tell I'm doing a bit. No, that's really part of Book of Memories. That was 100% a truth. I wasn't making up anything.
that really is like a pretty pretty straightforward description of what happens in like I think maybe the first couple of chapters of Book of Memories. Because Book of Memories basically functions like an incredibly low stakes death note. But but there's a, there's a positive outcome and a negative outcome, right? Depending on how you play the game. So like, if you, you know, write in the chat, like, I wish I could have had the promotion at the stupid job instead of Derek, fucking Derek. I think his name actually is Derek in the game, but it's like fucking Derek. But uh, you know, either either you write it in in like a nice way, where you know, oh, you get the promotion instead, but that's because Derek got transferred to be like a regional manager at a different store or whatever. So, you know, it was, a, it was a good outcome for both of you. What a nice person you are. Or it's the bad outcome where you get the promotion instead because Derek gets hit by a truck. Fucking Derek! Is that really what the game is about? Yeah, no, it, it's, it's a bunch of interqu- It's a bunch of stupid drama nonsense. Like, really low-stakes drama for a lot of the game, like soap opera shit in the Silent Hill. It's really weird. Like, then there's also like a bit with your girlfriend or boyfriend, depending on like the, the gender of the character you chose, because only the straights were considered with this one. That's not really the story's biggest problem. So you get you do get together with the girl or not, but in like a good way or in a bad way. <laughs> And then, uh, then, then you get an ending depending on how many uh, good or bad changes you made. And I wouldn't say any of the endings really represent, like truly wholly positive outcomes. It's kind of all sort of like various spooky story ending type things. With probably the lamest of these endings being the one where it turns out it was all in your head and you're actually a patient at a mental asylum. The book was all in your brain. <laughs> like, come on. That sucks, dude. That's the worst. Whereas I think the ending that happens if you go all the way good is that it transpires that the book, every time you make like a positive change, it takes a toll on your body. And so the protagonist like withers away and dies trying to correct all the injustices in the world. Which again, a bit pie in the sky, but it's appropriately tragic, I suppose. It's just sort of—it's a bit out of step given how low stakes the rest of the game is, because the rest of the the rest of the story involves nothing of consequence. Nothing of consequence. <laughs> Fucking Derek. We hate Derek! Didn't know about this. Yeah, no, Book of Memories story is maybe 2% of the game overall. Thank <laughs> you. 
And is it Book of Memories is really good and you should play it. It's not very good. It's hard to recommend to anyone but someone trying to play all Silent Hill games. Like, that's that's the only circumstance under which I would recommend it. And even then, you know, that's not really a recommendation, that's just a prerequisite. So, do you want to play all Silent Hill games? Well, that's a Silent Hill game, technically. In a sense, it could be said to be one of the games in this series. And I'll be honest with you, I don't think if you wanted to take a mulligan on it, I wouldn't really... I wouldn't be out here giving you much shit. If you'd said you'd played every Silent Hill game, Asterix, not Book of Memories, I wouldn't... I wouldn't... It'd be like, yeah, fair enough. Like, you just... You don't need to. <laughs> it's not important. Pog! Cold. At least play the play novel. Oh, yeah, play novel! Play novel essential reading. You gotta play play novel. If you haven't played that one, are you really a fan? Could you play downpour? <laughs> I, don't, I don't like downpour. I don't like downpour, but it is like it's, it is a it is a mainline entry in the series, and it is like a real video game. It's not very good though. I guess, I guess the thing is that if you were like, I've played every Silent Hill game, and you're like, oh yeah, but I haven't played Downport, I'd go, mm, you haven't played all of them, have you? And you just haven't. It's just not happened. You've, you've told me a lie. Whereas for some reason, I just, I wouldn't care very much if you told me it was like all the book of memories. So, ah, uh, eh, whatever. Played Homecoming? I've played Homecoming. What about Origins? Origins is probably the Western Silent Hill game I dislike the least, which is a choice of words picked very deliberately. Origins is okay. I think it's it, in its original format as like a PSP game. Is it's firstly the PSP version is the best version just in terms of how it looks. The PS2 version is too dark. And runs worse somehow. You use selective words. What are you planning? Now that is a selective word. That's true. As as like a portable, vaguely classically styled survival horror game, Origins is fine. When compared to the rest of the PS2 pantheon of Silent Hill games, obviously there is really no comparison because it's it was a PSP game. It was a PSP game. I think, I think the context does Origins a disservice quite often. Because no one actually plays it on PSP as their, as like their initial experience these days. This, this is kind of like an excuse in the sense that I'm basically saying it's alright for a PSP game. I mean, have I ever reviewed PT Silent Hill? I've never played PT Silent Hill. I don't have any interest in it. There, there is there is no way for me to play PT. I did not have a PS4 at the time when that was circulating. And it's like not even a real game at this point. It's just it's a it's an idea, it's an ephemeral concept. And I I have no I don't really have any interest in evaluating what could have been. I only know what's now, not what could have. PT somehow managed to be one of the most like influential horror games of the past couple decades, and it didn't even actually come out properly. Funny how that keeps happening. 
Where the, the most influential, some, some of the more influential games are the ones that don't even make it to release. Because the idea is compelling, but that's the thing, is that the idea is too compelling, so it never actually takes shape, because it's not a real thing that exists, it's a concept. Hi, Chloe Martyrs. I'm thinking about uh, a different game in a completely different genre. Think about indie RPG Oddity. I disagree. Oh. Good luck on the run, Punchy. Serpent, thank you for the two months of Prime Gaming. Thanks for the good luck. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm thinking about like a indie RPG Oddity, which has been in development in some capacity since like 2014 or something, when it was originally Mother 4 and then it went under a brand change to Oddity. The look of that game has been influential to many, many, many games that have now fully released, but Oddity itself never actually made it out the door. Very, very influential project on a lot of other indie RPG projects and sort of the Earthbound inspired vein. Quirky indie RPG about depression, so goes the meme, you know? But that game itself, Mother 4 slash Oddity, uh, has not come out. And currently, people largely think that project is dead. And I don't know. We haven't heard hide nor tail of, uh, of Oddity since its initial trailer reveal, like a few years ago at this point. But, I don't know, that's not uncommon for indie games these days, so who the fuck knows? People, people tend to call, like, ah, oh, dead game, dead project, you know, like, it's over. There's nothing here. Far too quickly. Like, we've, I've heard people say that about Silk Song, for fuck's sake. Like, you know, ah, oh, you know, it's, it's dead game, it's having dev hell, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, probably not, man. It just takes a while. Like, do you, do you really think they stopped making it? That's crazy. You're crazy for that. I think I think this because I, I worked on Freedom Planet 2 for, like, three years, and that was a game people were saying that about a lot. So it was in dev hell for years, it's like, no, it wasn't. There was, I, as someone who was personally involved with that project for a good chunk of its development, there was nothing that I would call dev hell in that one. Like, dev hell inv implies a sort of position where progress has, like, stalled or seriously slowed down. That never really happened with Freedom Planet 2. It just kind of took a while. It's a big game. What do you want from me? Like, there were difficulties in production about certain things, as there typically are when any game is made, but nothing I would describe as, like, a state of serious slowdown. Is there a specific upscaler I'm using for streaming? A RetroTINK 5X. Sorry, I, j I needed to get that one before it scrolled off the screen. Yeah, game not out, game dead. Yes, Silk Song is just, just is just taking a long time. They can't, and it it needs to take a long time to make. They kind of set themselves up for this because they accidentally charged like fifteen dollars for a fucking massive game in Hollow Knight. So if Silk Song isn't equally as big, if not bigger, how are they going to charge more? They kind of set themselves up for this. It's what you get for damaging the discourse about game length to price cost concerns. Permanently, you get to exist in hell making a game for years! I'm sure people will like Silk Song when it comes out, though. But, like, su such is the problem of trying to one-up yourself constantly. Yeah, Omori took six years to make as well. Omori, I'm, I'm actually given to understand that there was a lot of procrastinating behind the scenes of that one. But, I don't know, the end game turned out pretty good, so... It all worked out. I guess. Yeah, that before Omori came out, the voices were getting pretty vicious with calling that one a scam. You know, it's like, ah, oh, it's just taking ages. Oh, it's, I don't know. It, it, did, it took a while. I do grant that that was, like, a pretty long development period. But also... It's like, like, Omocat's one person? I mean, she had help. 
Obviously. But still, that was a fucking awful line. Yeah, like, Omokat's sole job during that time period was not developing Omori. She's a fashion designer. She had other things to do. <laughs> At the end of the day, the game came out and it was pretty good. It was very good, actually. It's one of my favorite games of the year it came out, so sometimes games just take a while. Especially for developing them on the side. Development Hell like a specific type of stalling? I'm not sure it's a specific type per se, but I would describe Development Hell as like when external factors conspire to really slow down or outright halt continued development on a game. Like it has no formal definition. But game took a long time to make isn't Development Hell. This is, this is, again, this is something I'm picky about just because a game I worked on for a while was often accused of being in development hell because it took about... I don't know. From initial announcement, it did take a while to come out. I think it was like, what, seven years from initial announcement to release? But that being said, development hadn't started when it was initially announced. is probably not something I expect Sabrina will do ever again. <laughs> don't think she's gonna, uh, don't think she's gonna announce a game from, like, the nanosecond she has the idea in her brain ever again as a result of that. Oh, to be young and naive. Sabrina is significantly older than me. Not necessarily external factors, so it could be like bad management, corporate inertia, feature creep, massive change in the concept. I would describe all of those as external. I don't know, as, as someone who worked on a project that was often accused of being in dev hell, it's just, I don't know, it just took a while to put all the bits together. Like, it never stalled for silly reasons, it just... Making the levels and drawing all the bits took a lot of time. You know, there, there was no big change in the plan, it just took a while to do what it is that we wanted to do. Shrug. But then it came out, this, this, this is the ultimate thing though, is it? It comes out, and then people liked it. It, it, it suddenly stops mattering real fast when the thing releases and it's actually good, right? But that makes it all the scarier, because like, what if it comes out and it's not good? Because that does happen, you know? There's no guarantee. Sometimes you can spend years and years, half, like half a decade working on something, and then people don't like it. And it's like, well, fuck. And you know, that might not be symptomatic of a troubled development from just taking time. It might be that it just, people just didn't like it. Sometimes you, you do your best and the video game just doesn't work out. You'd like to not do that. But it's tough. It's hard. Oh, you are so... Ooh, in on the corner!
Silk Song will release at some point. I have absolute confidence in that. It, it's definitely still a thing they're doing. You must be patient. This is another thing I don't understand, right? I'm gonna talk about the gamers now. <laughs> the gamers! I mean, we're talking about the gamers, but we're about to talk more about the gamers. I've- there is a strange trend I notice where people often interpret, like, interest in your game as, like, a contract already. Again, I experienced this kind of, like, firsthand. Not directly at me because my involvement in the project was something I kept on the down low until it came out. But a lot of people were, like, actively sort of hostile about the fact that Freedom Planet 2 was taking, a, like, a, some amount of time to make. Especially because it also did get delayed, like, twice. <laughs> For reasons! The reason being that things take longer than we thought. Crazy shit. What's this? Uh, in this sense, the problem was estimations, uh, hard. But, like, people would get hostile about it. They'd get mad. Now, why is it taking so long? Ah! So how could it possibly take so long? Like, I don't understand getting, like, angry about it. Because we, like, you haven't paid anything yet, fucko. You see this a lot with Silk Song as well, right? You know? Well, like, people's, people's heightened interest in it is, like, they treat it like it's some kind of contract. This was a very good hospital. Ooh. Yeah, like, like a contract, a social contract, and when the, the contract is broken, or otherwise you just like, it doesn't meet their up even if no release date is announced. You know, it starts taking one, like, what are they doing? You know, don't, don't, don't they care? What's going on over there? And they get like, kind of, like, a bit hostile and shirty with you about it, and it's like, why? You haven't paid any money for it yet, bro. Because games like Freedom Planet 2 and Silk Song were or are being made without like any kind of Kickstarter or player investment. You know, a, a Kickstarter I can sort of understand people being testy about because you've put your money into that. Where is it? Hello? Like, it's still not very healthy because sometimes things just take a while, but sometimes Kickstarter projects do just flatline and nothing materializes. And in that case, yeah, you've wasted your money. Ouch. Such things occur. But when you haven't even paid for the product yet, I don't get that. So like, we haven't even asked you for your fucking $25 yet to play Freedom Planet 2. So why are you mad that it's not out yet? Relax. Cur currently speaking, <laughs> currently speaking, you, like, we don't owe you anything and you don't owe us anything because we haven't asked you for money yet. <laughs> Lemp. <laughs> Lemp. So, you know, thank you for being interested in video games. We look forward to delivering video games in the future. But for the time being, please stop being angry. When you haven't actually bought anything yet. No no money has exchanged hands. So if you buy something and you don't receive it, then you have more of a right to be kind of pissy about it. But like, being interested in the project is not a purchase. <laughs> Thank, thank you for your interest. But please hold that. But a potential buyer. Potential buyer is such a nebulous concept. Ooh, lucky! That barely worked because Mason had an aiming snafu. So 
It's like potential buyer doesn't always mean buyer. Doesn't always mean buyer, buyer, you know, like it's nothing. Everyone is a potential buyer. People, people act all kinds of strange about that. It's like, be realistic. People are not realistic with themselves. I saw a tweet doing the rounds. This is never a good sign when you see a tweet doing the rounds. But I saw a tweet doing the rounds lately about a, a guy, a developer, who was complaining on Twitter about uh, his game getting bounced back from Steam's lot check for the fact that it crashed when you unplugged the controller. And he was complaining about needing to fix it in order to, for Steam to list it. Which, okay, to be perfectly honest with you, the complaint is unreasonable. Your game shouldn't fucking crash if you disconnect the controller, man. But I also, I understand that, like, another bug. I'm annoyed. Like, yeah, I get it. Uh, one of the bugs that arose during Freedom Planets 2's testing is that the game would crash if you were using a non-English time zone. Fuck. Fun! Yeah, anyway, the guy was, like, venting on Twitter or whatever, and he's, like, he's, he's a small dev with a small following. Like, his game isn't, like, incredibly popular. But that tweet blew the fuck up, and, like, a whole bunch of people were just yelling at this this small indie dev being, like, frustrated with a dumb bug. But he should, he should fix it. You know, like, fix, fix the thing. Your game shouldn't crash if it unblocks the controller. But I understand being frustrated, you know? Like, it's not, it's, like, it's annoying, you know? Because, like, it's one of those cases where it didn't happen on his machine. It's, like, he had to, like pull in someone because like it just he couldn't replicate the behavior but you had a whole bunch of gamers going at the dude like i ah, is, is this is this how you treat this how you act about potential gamers buying your game and it's like be fucking real guys the guy had like 300 followers on twitter none of you guys were buying his fucking games be serious if there's some more copies now? Probably not. Like, he was- he was acting the fool, but I think that was the most engagement he ever got regarding a topic around his videos. People just going, ah, you know, we'll, we'll never- well, you think we're not going to buy your games now? It's like, pfft, I'll pirate this guy's game. It's like, no, you're fucking not. You don't have enough interest in the first place. What are you talking about? You were just saying words. You use selective words! What are you planning? Such such is the potential buyer. That's why I'm I'm very I'm very unresponsive to the potential buyer type of argument. Is that everyone's a potential fucking buyer. So who's gonna who, were you going to were you interested in this in the first place? No. What are you saying? Just talking to talk. <laughs> Not ideal. That was a very odd situation. I got around him without bonking the wall or getting hit, but I had to kind of like slow down to, to finagle that, so not um, <laughs> not the ideal. Pear false. Thank you for the three months. Where's Pear true? You might pick up a Steam key on a dodgy reseller site in five years, I'll have you know. I know, right? No! Yes! It's 
somehow, four out of four. Four out of four dodges were a success, even though the second one was really strange. It was strange, but I did technically get past all of them. Movement, Mason, Jesus. Potential buyers, the reason why publishers equate piracy with lost sales. Yeah, and that's just, it's not true. At the very least, it's not a one to one ratio. same time you never know who might be interested it's kind of, it kind of it's one of those weird concepts that kind of cuts both ways it's like it's both meaningless it's meaningless in like both directions yeah, unexpectedly things can just sort of pick up momentum out of the blue if you present a compelling concept it can just catch on like god knows Balatro, recent smash indie success did not do much in the way of marketing it just kind of had a demo that people really liked. Like man, man just kind of threw the demo out there and people were playing it for many, many hours and it just kind of spread through word of mouth from there and then it picked up a publisher. Was Power the same? Power World was announced at the fucking Game Awards, I think. So no, they had a lot of money for marketing. <laughs> Power, Power World caught on because it had completely deranged trailers shown at a very wide audience. In Hi-Fi Rush or something. Hi-Fi Rush Shadow Dropped, which is not a very compel- That's probably not a good way to market your game, but it was Shadow Dropped at, like, an Xbox game conference, so it wasn't, like, unknown. It was just, hi, we made this game. You can play it now. But it was a very big event. So that's some marketing, but it's, you know, it, doesn't, it didn't have, like, a run-up. That was a bit early. But past that point, Hi-Fi Rush did mostly just spread because it was received very well. Like, it was like, we... It was a high-profile announcement, but it picked up momentum because it was really good. You know, if it wasn't really good, it wouldn't have picked up momentum. Simple as. In, in order to move Hella units the way Hi-Fi Rush did, it just needed to be good. Because all it had was that shadow drop announcement, and then people actually started playing it. And very quickly, a consensus was reached that Hi-Fi Rush fucks. Oops. Bonk! It was able to kickstart that momentum by way of having a very high profile announcement, but if it wasn't good, it would have gone nowhere. Cause shadow dropping your game basically robs it of all like pre-release hype, you know? There wasn't there wasn't a base of people ready and expecting to buy Hi-Fi Rush, because people didn't even know it existed. Until the nanosecond it was ready to release. Yeah, it's a gamble that isn't guaranteed to work. I honestly kind of wonder why did they shadow drop it? I couldn't tell you. It's honestly, by all conventional wisdom, a shadow drop is like, not the way. <laughs> nice, I got the run stop this time.
Conventional wisdom dictates that a shadow drop... Like, here's a fun fact for you guys on, on the publishing side of things as an indie. Steam actually won't let you shadow drop your game. Like, you have to have an active store page, I think, at least a couple of weeks before you release the app. Steam will not allow you to shadow drop your video game. And they, like, they give you a list of reasons why you shouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, if, if you're a company like Square Enix, you can get, like, special... You can get, like, special access so you can fucking shadow drop Neo Twewi so no one buys it. But for the average independent developer, Steam will actually not allow you to shadow drop your game. They just won't let you do it. Because it's a bad idea. For the, uh, for the vast overwhelming amount of use cases, it is generally a better idea to let people know your thing is going to release before you do it. Build up hype, build up and Bellatro technically did that by releasing its demo. But it had no hype before that, like no one knew what Bellatro was, so in a sense it succeeded purely because people found it interesting. It picked up momentum from a demo because people played it during, like, the Steam Next Fest. And then it sort of accrued momentum from there because people were like, you tried this Bellatro game? Have you tried? Hello? So, you know, sometimes things just do well because they're good. But you could consider the demo an act of marketing. In fact, that's primarily what a demo's purpose is. But it did its job, uh, did a damn fine job of itself. Oh, it's hard. It's tough to speak about because, like, you know, it doesn't... There's no, there's no magic formula here. Sick dodge. I really like that strat. Here. That strat of like sidestepping Sybil shooting you is really fun to do. <laughs> it's very enjoyable. It looks so cool. You just sidestep the bullet like a cool Matrix dodge. You never sidestep to dodge the shot, you always just walk toward her and to one side. Well, you don't have the cool factor. I have the cool factor! <laughs> you gotta be cool! No, the main reason I like the sidestep is also because it's, like, extremely reliable. Like, fire six shots and then just start holding down walk and sidestep right. It will always work. There's no timing. There's, a, there's no way you can, like, aim it wrong by, like, walking too far and, like, fuck your shotgun shots up or whatever. It's very, very reliable. Mm. 
Bruh. You love my technical breakdowns of games? Are there more coming? What do you mean technical breakdowns? Like the Silent Hill 2 endings explained video or whatever? If I have a good idea for one of those, I might make another, but honestly, I don't think I have anything like that on the docket, really. I'll be honest with you, the Silent Hill, like, endings, uh, explaining how the system worked for the ending is, the, is a video I thought would perform better than it actually did. It didn't do terribly, but I thought it was very algorithm-friendly. Apparently not. My mistake, perhaps my mistake was including math in the title. Uh, math scary. That was slipshod. Like, the dodge worked, but Jesus. Gotta be better than that, man. Not amazing, no way. Are you using the 70k? Yes. Maybe. Might be a PB. Is it another seven is it another blessing of the 70k? Ow. Cheryl. 
I'm gonna go boil the kettle so we can try the Earl Grey uh, canned tea. It's a world record! Too early. What is 70k? A model of PS2. The short, there's a long version, but I'll give you the short version. The short version is that different models of PS2 run the game differently. And the 70k runs with better performance. For Silent Hill 1 overall, which makes the run, like, quite a bit easier, in my opinion. I don't think it makes the run technically faster, but it makes the run easier. And that does help. <laughs> I don't care. Quiet, Esperdante. Uh, Mason die. Right, did I get scammed? Is it is it a, is it an RTA scam? It's not an RTA scam at all. Whoa! It was no scam in the slightest. It's all right. I untied the fourth place position. Giving me the third place console run. Yes. 12 seconds away from console record now. 12. Only 12. It's a world record! The emulator record being about 10 seconds faster. It wasn't a scam at all. In fact, it was dead on. It was precise. It was exactly so. It was minus 4. The end time, it was minus 4. Straight up. It's just, it's that easy. It's that easy. It's time to make a victory tweet. Blessing of the 70k strikes again. Honestly, yeah, like, real. Man, that had a really crappy control room tower as well. There's definitely- there's- obviously there's still time save in this run! Eevee? Okay. I can do that. Where is Eevee? Where is- hang on. Can I do this? Where's Eevee? Oh no! Where is Eevee? I do not know! Actually, do not know where the EV is. <laughs> where are they? Is it, is it like on the floor? Is it underneath my bag? No. It's a world record! It's a Cinderace. What's this? That's not EV. There's a Meowth Rider over here. That's not an EV either, notoriously. You think I'd be into Pokemon way more than how many plushies I have, but I'm like, I like Pokemon I think are normal now. Like, as a game, I suppose. Where the fuck is my Eevee? I think I've seriously lost it. How do you lose an Eevee? Oh no, there it is. Found it. Eh. Alright. I am gonna pee.
before we sign off, he is evolving the strats. Some part of the can just fucking shot off. That's not great. Uh, I have canned Earl Grey tea. Actually, you can't find all bosses on leaderboard. Click the button on the right side of the leaderboard. It's in this category. Alright, squirty, squirty, squirty Earl Grey tea. Grim. It's very like a cream. It's it's liquid. Uh, the lid just fucking fired off in whatever direction, by the way. That's gone. Lastly, I have prepared, once again, for the benefit of, uh, of the stream. Change the game soon, hello. Uh, I've prepared a can, no more tea bags, instant canned in an aerosol can, liquid Earl Grey tea. How is, how is the canned Earl Grey? That tastes like a, much like the regular English breakfast, that's fine. I just don't like Earl Grey very much. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. That's drinkable. I'd rather drink the regular kind of tea, but there's nothing wrong with that. I disagree. I see Britain has answered the USA's power of cheese whiz, aerosolized cheese product, by doing the same to tea. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised, if not slightly disappointed, that overall. Uh, the, the, the spray tea isn't an abomination of mankind, but it's like, pretty alright, it's fine, that's drinkable. If you really need portable tea and don't want to like bring tea bags with you, that's fine. I'm probably taking this with me to work tomorrow. <laughs> I'm gonna get funny looks for it, but I don't care. Because in comparison to this, this is rancid. Very bad. Don't buy that. Uh, see, now now with this run, right, in the corner, this is why I like having the corner thing around here. It's good for relaxing after runs. Uh, I'm faced with the decision of, like, do I try to grind out the additional four seconds it would take to get to third place? Or second in the console leaderboard. Because that is within striking distance. Like, I can, I see where the four seconds is. I see the vision. The 12 seconds to the top console time, that's more of an ass. <laughs> that's more of an ass. I don't know about that, man. But like, I had a really shitty control room tower. It was spaghetti central over there. That was not so great. Can't see why not. Well, the question is whether or not I want to try or if I want to like pop over to any percent for a bit. Because I'm probably due a PB in any percent at this point. I feel like I've improved quite a bit from doing this. I finally, I finally implemented analog stick strats into my game. I've, I've been like ignoring that for a very long time. <laughs> you see with the 12 seconds out of the first one. Well, some of it is going to be like YOLOing the school dodges because I still do like the consistent approaches to pretty much all of those, but you can, you can just go for it on quite a few. Uh, and I'm too, uh, I hate doing that. I hate how unreliable it is to just YOLO like half of them. It's a pain. It makes me sad. But it's like, it's it's time to save, and if you're really going for those like very optimal high-end times, it's no, it's a way. It's a way you can get them. It's time to be had. There's no time to wait.
Can you spray directly in your mouth? This is like pure concentrated tea. So if you sprayed this directly into your mouth, it would be very intense and very bad. See top guys using a PS1, would that make up any of the difference? Nah, probably not. The thing about older models of the PlayStation 2 is that they basically have a PS1 inside of them. The 90k model does not, and that's why it starts behaving differently. They, like, replaced it with a sort of a uh, more compact version. So the performance specification becomes a little different. It, this isn't usually a big deal, and usually for most games, the 90k will gain more times in... gain time in loads. But A, in Silent Hill 1, that doesn't matter. And B, it doesn't actually seem like it does gain time in loads for Silent Hill 1. The load times actually appear to be of a fixed length, regardless. Go figure. Or at the very least, it can only get so fast. Hmm. Hmm. Who knew? I didn't. I never got the memo that 70k was better for this. I feel a bit scammed. <laughs> Been running this game for how long and I never got that memo? Fuck. Yeah, I'll have to. Uh, I'll have to learn the uh, the the. If I'm gonna go back to any percent, I'm, I'm gonna have to learn the proper way to do the romper thingy, because it's like it's a different method. It's better, but it's ultimately preference. True. Well, that being said, I don't know. I swapped over to 70k. I was really struggling to push myself past the 32 minute mark, and then I swapped to 70k, and I get, I get 31.55 within like five runs. I don't know. I don't, it's preference, but I don't think it's that much preference. I think it's just better. <laughs> I think it's just better. Maybe I was just really lucky. It's hard to tell. Silent Hill 1 is cursed like that. Uh, if, this is giving me the thought, though, where it's like, you know, my oldest time in this game is, like, UFO ending by, like, four years. I don't even have a PS2 PB for UFO ending. My, my, t my PB for that is still PSTV, I think. So it's like I'd be I'd be very do a PB with a, with cool 70k behavior, but the critical issue is that I fucking hate you a finding man. That category makes me sour, not sweet, like this tea. Is, would you describe it Earl Grey as sweet? I wouldn't really. were prompted to move away from PSTV. I didn't want to keep setting up the PSTV every time I wanted to run Silent Hill 1. That was the main reason. It wasn't like any sort of like hardware thing, even though I do actually think PSTV is at a disadvantage because it runs faster overall, which means mistakes are more punishing. <laughs> like, because of the speed up. It like, it, the overall game runs like a hair faster pretty much constantly. It's one of those. If, if, if this were an RTA game, PSTV would dominate by an obnoxious margin. But uh, I just couldn't, I, I almost always have a PS2 plugged in, but I just couldn't be bothered to keep setting up the PSTV every time I wanted to run Silent Hill 1, and I very often want to run Silent Hill 1. It's one of my, it's one of the favorite speedruns of this stream. The game run faster, so does in-game timer, no? Yes, that's, that's why it's probably not optimal. The other problem as well is that PSTV can't run straight through the back door when doing the out of bounds. You have to like finagle it slightly. That's minor, but it's not nothing. I do, however, think you gain... Nurse Push is almost always a lot easier on PSTV. I don't know what it is, but for whatever reason, she spawns further back on PSTV. I couldn't tell you why, but she does. It's way easier to get on PSTV. It's, like, very consistent. Whereas it's not, like, horrendously inconsistent on PS2, but I think it's much harder. Anyway, I'm just like, I'm drinking my, my spray can tea. Maybe I hit Old Grey less these days. I don't know. This is fine. 
it's still not my favourite. Like, I probably wouldn't go out of my way to drink Earl Grey on purpose over traditional spray English breakfast in a can. But, like, this is fine. This is drinkable. That's tea. That's identifiable as tea. <coughs> Never mind. Oh, he's dying. Oh! <laughs> that went down the wrong hole. The tea has killed me. Uh, <coughs> stop the stream! Uh, I'm out of time. I gotta go to work. That was that was gonna be the last run of the day, regardless of uh, of. <laughs> that was gonna be the last run of the day, regardless of what happened. So it's nice that we ended on a high note of getting a nice PB. But I am out of time for the day. I gotta go to work. This is a work day. Alright, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the stream, drop me a follow here on the Twitch.television. There will be more Silent Hill 1 runs coming soon to a stream near you. I just haven't decided what category yet. I'm either going to be following up to try and, uh... Try and steal my way into second console run for all bosses, or I might bounce to any percent and get my, get my probably overdue PB in that category. Because I definitely feel like I've improved. I definitely feel like I've. I mean, hard hard to argue with the the idea of like not having improved when I when I started this. My PB in all bosses was something like what? It was like thirty two thirty or something. I've cut like thirty seconds off it. That's a lot of seconds, man. Turn the console off. Social medias. Join the community Discord. Follow me on Twitter for stream announcements and other such things. But yeah, now I gotta go to work. And honestly, I gotta clean up my fucking desk before I go to work because it's full of tea. <laughs> it's full of these cans of tea and other assorted nonsense. What am I doing here? Also, check out the YouTube channel. If you're already on the YouTube, then, you know, you don't need to do anything. It's fine. Ah, oh, man. Juos is playing uh, a, the new Alone in the Dark. I want to play the new Alone in the Dark, too. He got a key from THQ Nordic. I didn't get a key from THQ Nordic. They don't like me. That's fucking crazy. He got one, but I didn't? Where is my key? THQ? This sucks. Publishers don't like me. Ugh. Well, anyway, Jules is playing the new alone. He's he's a cool streamer. Whatever. Fuck. Every go watch him instead. He's cool. Why don't you go? Why don't you go watch the cool streamers instead? Not the lame streamers like me who don't get keys for alone in the. Hmm. All right. Thanks for watching, folks. Ta-ta for now. Bye bye.